Uh, hello everybody, this is Tim again here with my review for Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Uh, I just want to jump right into this and say that this is only an okay film. Like I said, the rest of this, uh, the last two sequels were more like spinoffs and then, then, then sequels because, well, everybody died in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Um, the director has basically said that you could consider this a sequel to the second one if you wanted to, but you'd have to, like, uh, be really imaginative for that. I mean, it's pretty clear that everybody's dead at the end of the second one. And that story is wrapped up. This film, though, I'm, uh, the studio, I believe, wanted to make it as if it ignored the second one and took place like after the first one. Or a few years after the first one. Kind of like it's the real sequel to the first one. And it is more of a sequel in tone, but it has like more of an MTV feel to it and stuff than the first one does. And kind of seems like it's going for a more mainstream audience like New Line Cinema, who released this film, is trying to go for more of a franchise, I guess, to go along with their Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. But the film is directed by Jeff Burr, I believe, and it stars... Uh, Kate Hodge, uh, William Butler, Ken Foray, um, and Viggo Mortensen, and uh, Joe Unger, I believe is his name. Um, and I think it might be R.A. R. A. Miloff who plays Leatherface in this one, I'm not for sure. Uh, but I like the representation of Leatherface in this film better than the second one. And this film has a, a really like cool soundtrack to it. <laughs> There's a great like song about Leatherface during the end credits. It's a lot of fun. Um, but just to go into the story with this film, this film is not as good as the first one or the second one. It's a two-star film of a possible four. It's only an okay film. It's not a bad movie. Most of the reason why this film didn't turn out as good as it could have. Um, it could have been a film almost on the level of the first film uh, in intensity. I think it has the potential there, and the cast is decent. But the reason it didn't get to live up to its full potential is because this film was like being fucked with from the get go. It kept they kept going back refilming stuff, taking stuff out and editing stuff and changing stuff. Just go ahead and say it. The R rated version of this film is a piece of shit. Don't even bother watching it. It's utter dog shit. The only way to watch this film is unrated. That's the only good version of the film. And this film is only okay. It has a good cast though, and the new family members, Leatherface is basically I guess he's with like the mom side of the family in this one. Uh but uh New family members, you got Tink, uh, played by Joe Unger, I believe is his name, and he does it well, he's fine, he's likable, and you got Viggo Mortensen as a character called Tex, Viggo Mortensen, of course, from Lord of the Rings, he's great here, he's a lot of fun, he's probably the highlight of the film in terms of the new family characters, but him and Tink, you know, they're a lot of fun, and you even got a little girl here who's Leatherface's daughter from a rape, I suppose, uh, so it adds a new interesting element to Leatherface like I like, and doesn't turn Leatherface into a dope like the second one, like I didn't like. Uh, but this film is still only okay, but as far as the family characters go, um, this film is good in that department. They're much better here, the family characters are, than in the next one, which I don't even want to go into until that review. Uh, but, and you and you basically get the mom of Leatherface and his family in this one, and she's like in a wheelchair and talking through one of them voice boxes like at your throat. Um, and it looks like her throat's been slashed. But anyway, and you get Grandpa back again as a corpse. <laughs> he's dead in this one, but he's there. Um, so jumping into the film here, you got, um, William Butler and Kate Hodge, who are like a couple, I believe is broke up, and they're heading across country. She's heading to, to, uh, California, I think, maybe, um, to drop off a car for her father, and, uh, I guess her and William Butler are, like, breaking up or something. It's kind of like the basics. It's a similar setup to the original film. This film, uh, I guess they were trying to market this film as the true sequel to the first one and even in story and tone it kind of tries to imitate the first one a little bit too much when they get to a gas station they got to get some they got to get some gas and there's this character there who runs the gas station the character's name is alfredo i believe and he's funny in this film and another likable member of the family takes up the sawyer family but he like he takes a picture of her and wants money for it and shit and it's so thrown in there just as a callback to the first movie it's it's forced in there too much some of the callbacks to the first movie are kind of forced in too much, and this one is a little bit too on the nose and a little annoying. But uh, anyway, before they get to the gas station, you get a scene like where they're heading uh, to California, and uh, there's this big body pit, and the police never went there, and it's obviously victims of the families, and uh, the bodies have like decayed and stuff and shit. And pretty neat scene, helps set the tone with the movie. This I like this movie a lot up until like uh, up until it comes to the deaths that are so heavily cut. And the characters in this one are the weakest of the three films thus far. Besides Ken Foray, I like his character. <laughs> but um, everybody else is just pretty stereotypical. Well, William Butler and Kate Hodge are pretty stereotypical. Um, 
they get to the gas station after that. They're there getting gas. Viggo Mortensen's there. He's Tex, basically. I think his real name in the film is Eddie, but he likes to be called Tex. He's uh, trying to get William Butler and Kate Hodge to give him a ride. Uh, William Butler doesn't want to give him a ride. William Butler's kind of a prick. Um, <laughs> maybe if they just gave him a ride, none of this shit would have happened. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, he doesn't want to give him a ride. And um, the Alfredo character there is like spying on Kate Hodge in the bathroom and shit. And um, he's got some okay creepiness to it, I guess. Um. Megan Mortensen is, gets kind of agitated because William Butler doesn't want to give him a ride. He runs in there, grabs, uh, I'll just call him Alfredo, that's his character's name, grabs him, and um, you don't know it yet, but they're actually just like in cahoots together. Uh, Kate Hodge comes out there, Alfredo comes, drink, uh, goes into the his gas station, comes back out with a fucking shotgun, <laughs> and acts like he's going to shoot him. Uh, right before that, uh, Megan Mortensen uh, had gave him like a uh, directions to take this other path, which is obviously... Not gonna lead to anything good. It's a setup, basically. And uh, so he comes out there with a shotgun. He's gonna shoot him. They hop in the car. William Butler and Kate Hodge drive off. Egan Mortensen. Uh, William Butler thinks he sees him get shot, but obviously he didn't. Uh, the plan of the families in this one is really like intricate and complicated, and I don't really think that it probably wouldn't have worked in real life. It's a little bit too overly thought out for this type of family, but whatever. Or these type of killers. I mean, there's no guarantee that they would have took the. Texas road, but whatever. So they're heading up that road, and then you got um, Ken Foray, who's like coming from the other direction. He's a survivalist. He goes up into the mountains and shit and trains himself to survive in harsh situations, I guess. He's coming from the other direction. You get the. Uh, oh, uh, before that, you get a Tink who's driving around. Well, yeah, Tink who's driving around in his truck. He's like fucking with uh, William Butler and Kate Hodge. And he throws like a dead coyote on, uh, on their hood of their vehicle, and it causes them to crash, and they got. Well, it causes them to stop in the middle of the road, and they gotta change the tire. Every, every like, there's animals in the film that have like little uh, ear piercings with um, little metal, uh, but metal ear piercings. Like he, puts, he likes to like, uh, he's like the technological advanced one of the group. He likes to chrome everything and shit. But anyway, they take the coyote off the um, off the front of the vehicle. They gotta change the tire. Uh, Leatherface shows up. Leatherface is much more aggressive in this film. I like the way Leatherface is played in this film much better than the second one. Uh, he like fucking attacks them, but they manage to get in the vehicle. He they hit him a little bit with the car, knock him down. He gets back up and rips the fucking trunk off. It's pretty entertaining and a fun scene, but they manage to get away. Uh, then you get Viggo Mortensen hopping out in the middle of the fucking road <laughs> uh, to try to throw him off track so they won't make it any further, and it causes them to wreck and uh, causes a uh, fucking uh, Ken Foray to wreck as well. And they both wreck, and Ken Foray is checking on them. He's taking care of him. They tell him that there's a big motherfucker out here with a chainsaw. Ken Foray goes back up there. There's road flares set up, and you got Tink up there who set up the road flares. Joe Longer. Um, he set them all up, and he tell and Ken Foray tells him he needs help. And uh, he looks in the back of uh, Tink's car, uh, Tink's truck, and there's a big fucking chainsaw. So uh, after uh, uh, William Butler told him about they've been attacked by a guy with a chainsaw, so he sees a chainsaw in the back of Tink's truck, and obviously puts two and two together. Um, and then he, uh, he decides to go get his gun. He's got like a machine gun, I believe, and it's, it's a good weapon to have in this situation. He goes back to get it and to reload it from his vehicle. Uh, and then uh, I guess Tank gets on the what's happening and decides to try to run him over. He tries to run him over. Ken Foray dodges and rolls down the mountain. Uh, Tank hits his vehicle and knocks it backwards uh, or, or knocks it or like spins it around, hits it because it's upside down. Uh, it's a pretty decent little scene. Uh, Ken Foray rolls down the mountain, gets in a fight with Leatherface. Pretty decent little fight. Ken Foray's got like the advantage, but then Leatherface gets like a little mini saw, <laughs> like he's got in his pocket or something. It's a little silly. Saws Ken Foray's leg, gets him off of him. Then there's this girl who's in the mountains that's there that kind of draws uh, Leatherface's attention away from Ken Foray. It's pretty entertaining. She's just basically there as a plot device. She doesn't really amount to anything. She's there as like plot service and just to tell Ken Foray what the fuck's going on, really. That they're hunting people, that they get them stranded out there and then hunt them uh, like animals, kind of like man's the most dangerous game. But anyway, it's mildly entertaining. She gets Leatherface away. Ken Foray gets away. Um, she gets away from Leatherface. Ken Foray and her are talking. Um, but uh, Ken Foray and her separate because he goes to look for the others. And uh, Leatherface kills her, puts her up against the tree, saws her with a chainsaw. You get okay amount of blood. This film, even an unrated version, is still cut pretty bad. Uh, she dies, and then uh, Ken Foray hears that he's pissed off. 
Um, right beforehand, right before she dies, though, she gives Ken Foray a lighter that she packs around with her, and he uses it to light his cigarettes with because like, he's a smoker in this film, I guess. Um, but anyway, and then uh, William Butler and Kate Hodge are walking like through a swamp or whatever, and his foot gets caught in a bear trap. Leatherface shows up and saws him off screen. You don't even see it, which is like, eh, let down. After the second movie with all the gore, this film feels really tame. It doesn't have the intensity of the first film to back it up. <laughs> um, so Kate Hodge gets away, obviously makes it to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family's house. She's there again, big cliche. The little girl's there, stabs her in the leg. She's got like a fucking skeleton doll, stabs her in the leg with like a little, uh, I don't know, shank or something. Uh, uh, fucking Viggo Mortensen shows up, grabs her from behind, and he's got like painted nails. I think we're supposed to assume that he's like... This character's bisexual in this film or something. I'm not for sure, but how the way he plays it well, I don't really care what his sexuality is really, but that element is kind of neat though and adds to the character. So they got her hostage there. Uh, Tink brings in uh, William Butler's character. They got him hung upside down, and for some reason he's still alive and doesn't even look like he really has a wound on him, so what the face must have like didn't saw him too bad. <laughs> but anyway, he's still alive. They got him hanging there on meat hooks. Uh, it's okay. They, uh, Big Mortensen nails nails in, uh, Kate Hodge's hands. It's neat and interesting. Uh, you got some fun this there. He, uh, the mama character shows up in there. She's fine. Um, she's no, uh, she's no Jim Sidow or she's no cook replacement <laughs> for his character, but she's okay. Uh, she's there. Uh, meanwhile, Ken Foray is still out in the fucking woods, uh, trying to find, uh, where, uh, where everybody else is. I'm trying to find Kate Hodge and William Butler's character so he can save them. Um, then Alfredo, who is pretty damn funny, actually, uh, he's wandering through the woods, throwing away dead body parts, and he's in this little swamp, and he's like, he kisses like a head or something like that. It's pretty amusing. He's pretty funny. Um, and then you get a scene where, like, uh, Ken Foray comes out, and he's got, like, Al, he's got Alfredo, like, at gunpoint. He's gonna kill him, and he asks him, like, how many more are there and stuff, and he, you know, Alfredo says, how many, how many what, OJ? <laughs> I thought that was fucking funny, but anyway. He knocks his brains out and knocks him down into the fucking swamp. <laughs> and then uh, you get a scene back at the house where uh, Leatherface is there and he's like, he jams out with headphones to this movie. I guess he likes heavy metal music, which is kind of amusing. Um, but um, yeah, you got Leatherface back there at the house. And then you got, um, they're going to kill uh, William Butler's character, finish him off. And um, they got like a rigged sledgehammer thing where you pull this little lever and these two sledgehammers from equal sides like swing down, I think. Or maybe one, I'm not for sure. I don't remember. And it knocks his brains out and kills him. It's kind of like a more inventive way, I'd say. Well, Tank came up with it, him being the technologically advanced one in the group. The only one with the IQ above a raisin, I guess. <laughs> Makes him, uh, uh, he came up with that idea, I suppose. The Tex character in the film is kind of like the one who can pretend to be a normal person to, like, lure people in. So he's got to have, like, basic intelligence, too, I guess. But those two seem to be the only ones in any sense. But anyway, or semi-sense, <laughs> But anyway, the little girl comes in there, and Kate Hodge thinks that uh, she's telling them to stop not to do it. <laughs> but really, she's wanting to do it because she feels like she's old enough to make a kill now. And so she pulls it and uh, <laughs> and uh, kills William Butler, basically. You don't even get to see it. You get to kind of see the impact, but it cuts away. But it's okay. It's entertaining seeing the little girl do it. It's, it's fine. It's fun. Um, before that, uh, you got a funny scene where Viggo Mortensen, like, when he's hanging upside down, he grabs William Butler's head and tells him if he needs anything, just twitch. <laughs> it's 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 mildly amusing. But anyway, um, and then you get another funny scene where fucking Leatherface is like, uh, uh, is uh, typing on this little, uh, like, spell thing or something like that. And it's like showing a picture of a clown or something. He's supposed to type, what is it? And he's putting food over and over. It's pretty funny. Ken Foray shows up. He's, like, looking at Leatherface, doing it through the window. Then they got a. Uh, then it's time to kill Kate Hodge and Leatherface is gonna saw her with the chainsaw. Uh, Ken Foray shows up, starts blasting his machine gun through the fucking uh, house and uh, kills the mom character. Blows off uh, Tink's fingers in a really silly looking special effect. But uh, he falls down, fucking kills the mom character, shoots the chainsaw to Leatherface's hand. Oh, and in this film, Leatherface gets like a fucking Excalibur saw. It's like a chrome chainsaw. It says the saw is family on it. Even though this film ignores the second one, it still takes like the fucking tack line from it, which is kind of weird. But uh, it's a really badass looking fucking chrome saw. But anyway, um, and uh, so he shoots and basically kills them all except for uh, Viggo Mortensen. Well, Tink shouldn't be dead. He only had his fingers blown off, but he acts like he's dying, so I don't get what the fuck that was about. That was weird. That didn't make no sense. Um, 
I think they, it seemed like they went back and refilmed it, like they was wanting to bring his character back for the next one, should this one be successful. Successful, but then the, I guess they felt like it wasn't gonna be, so they went back and refilmed his lines or something. I don't know. But anyway, Kate Hodge gets loose and she stabs Big and Mortensen, manages to make it out of there. So Leatherface comes out there, and Leatherface can fucking drive a truck in this one, so that's pretty neat too. He's like much more aggressive in this one. There's one scene where um, Tink is mad at him and throws his uh, cassette tape in the fire, and he fucking forces him to get it out for him. It's entertaining. Like Leatherface is much more aggressive and, and hardcore in this one, which I enjoy. Um, but anyway. Um, Leatherface gets out there, drives a truck, tries to run Ken Forey over. You think he hit him, but he didn't. Uh, then he gets out of the truck and gets ready to chase after Kate Hodge. Kate Hodge tries to act like, tries to do, tries to broaden her acting here like she's like, her characters went more crazy or crazier or whatever. And it doesn't really work. She has a little trouble playing crazy in this film, which makes her the weakest lead of the three, but she's still fine. Leatherface chases off after her. Viggo Mortensen tries to kill Ken Forey with an axe. She get an okay fight here, nothing super exciting. It's just mildly amusing. They just pretty much just roll around the ground a little bit. Uh, but uh, uh, Viggo Mortensen misses, hits the gas tank, gets some uh, gas on him, I believe. Or gets a gas trail leading to him. Uh, Ken Forey takes a lighter, sets the gas trail on fire, sets Viggo Mortensen on fire, fucking obliterates him. Uh, Viggo Mortensen's on fire. He's pretty much dead. <coughs> uh, skip to the next scene here. Uh, Leatherface is chasing after Kate Hodge through the woods. She gets her foot caught in his trap. It pulls her into the water. Uh, Leatherface shows up again before he gets a chance to get her. <coughs> Sorry, still got my little uh, allergies here going. <laughs> but before he chance, before he gets a chance to get her, uh, Kid Foray shows up in the woods, grabs him, slams him into the water. You get a decent fight scene here, nothing too exciting, but it's okay. Um, and Leatherface manages to get a hold of him and puts his head next to the Excalibur saw, <laughs> and saws like the side of his head. You don't even get to see the death, but it's it's mildly amusing because it happens like off screen. Uh, even though he, he should be dead, but he miraculously survives. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but, um, after that, uh, she, uh, she takes a rock and beats Leatherface in the head with it. She has an amusing character arc in this film because she doesn't like violence or anything. Beginning of the film, but towards the end, she's like beating the fuck out of everybody, <laughs> beating the fuck out of Leatherface to try to survive. So, it's an interesting character change. Uh, because there's a scene in the film where they hit an armadillo and she can't kill it with a rock, but William Butler can and he does. And, and she had, her character has to evolve in the film, become more aggressive to survive. Anyway, she beats Leatherface's brains in, so he's we think he's dead. He should be dead, but of course he's not. They get away. Well, she gets away, and then you get the next scene where she's sitting out in the middle of the road, and the truck pulls up, and it turns out it's Ken Forey, who has like just a little gash on his fucking head, even though he got his head sawed into by a chainsaw. <laughs> Ridiculous. That almost makes me want to hate the movie. Um, but he's miraculously alive. And then the fucking Alfredo shows back up with a sledgehammer, knocks Ken Foray down, knocks him out, tries to kill Kate Hodge. Kate Hodge gets the shotgun, gives a action film one line. Uh, pretty, uh, she's like says something like "Pretty good, you backwoods motherfucker" or something, and blows him down and kills him. And then you get the next scene where uh, Ken Foray, well, she helps him up. They get in the vehicle, and that's pretty much they drive off, and that's the end of the movie. Well, then you get one little last scene where Leatherface is miraculously alive, starts up his chainsaw and cue badass heavy metal song about Leatherface during the credits. I'm not sure what band sings this song, but it kicks ass. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, this film is just okay. Uh, William Butler, he's just kind of there. He's decent. Kate Hodge, she's okay, but she has trouble acting like she's, she has trouble acting crazy in the film when her character is supposed to be going crazy. Uh, Ken Foray, he does fine. He's the more likable of the three leads. Um, uh, Tex and Tink and the new Leatherface, they're all three fine. Uh, Alfredo, he's funny. All the new family members, they're fine. This makes this just an okay sequel. It has no reason to exist, uh, but uh, it's an okay film. I would say if you had to watch any film after the first two in the original franchise, not counting the remake and the prequel, I'd say just watch this one. That's, this is the only film worth watching after the first two in the original franchise, not counting the remake and the prequel. Uh, but, um, yeah, there's really no reason for this film to exist. The new family members are fine, though. Um, the new Leatherface is better than the Leatherface from the second one. I mean, at least, like, well, maybe not, like, the actor who plays him maybe not be better, but, um, just, like, the way he's, uh, portrayed is better. But, um, but, yeah, I would say the actor is, uh, well, no, I would say the actor of this one and the one from the second one's about even. But uh, both Leatherfaces are good. I just prefer this version. The one in the second one's too much of a, just a joke and too much of a dope. 
But uh, yeah, this film is good. It's not. It, I mean, well, it's okay. It's. Not, I wouldn't even say it's good. It's not great either, and it's not a classic by any means. It's just an okay film. This is a rental film. It's worth a watch. It's better than stuff like uh, Graveyard Shift and shit like that, and See to Chucky. It's. I would. Um. I, like I said, I would say that it's just an okay film. It's worth. It's an okay two-hour time killer. You can watch it and just be like, okay, pointless, but I've wasted two hours. It was okay. But anyway, I'll see you guys again with the next review for the, the, the abomination of a piece of shit Texas Chainsaw Massacre in the Next Generation. I'll have to try to power through that one like I did C to Chucky. That film is way worse than C to Chucky, so I, I <laughs> wish me luck. I'll see you guys again with the next review.